Hi, and welcome to the video. Here we're going to have a look at using Next Sentence Prediction or NSP for fine tuning our BERT models. Now, a few of the previous videos we covered mass language modeling and how we use mass language modeling to fine tune our models. NSP is like the other half of fine tuning for BERT. So, both of those techniques during the actual training of BERT, so when Google train BERT initially, they use both of these methods. And whereas MLM is identifying or almost training under relationships between words, next sentence prediction is training on more long term relationships between sentences rather than words. And in the original BERT paper, it was found that without NSP, because they tried training BERT without NSP as well, but performed worse on every single metric. So it is pretty important. And obviously, if we take this approach, we take mass language modeling and NSP and apply both of those to our training our models, fine tuning our models, we're going to get better results than if we just use MLM. So what is NSP? NSP consists of giving BERT two sentences, sentence A and sentence B, and saying, hey BERT, does sentence B come after sentence A? And then BERT will say, okay, sentence B is the next sentence after sentence A, or it is not the next sentence after sentence A. So if we took these three sentences that are on the screen, we have one, two, and three, right? One and two, if you ask Bert, does sentence two come after sentence one, then we'd kind of want Bert to say no, right? Because clearly they're on they're talking about completely different topics. And the type of language and everything in there just doesn't really match up. But then if we have a look at sentence three and sentence one, they do match up. So sentence three is quite possibly a the follow on sentence after sentence one. So in that case, we would expect Bert to say this is the next sentence. So let's have a look at how NSP looks within Bert itself. So here we have the core Bert model. And during fine tuning or pre training, we add this other head on top of BERT. So this is the BERT for pre-training head. And the BERT for pre-training head contains two different heads inside it. And that is our NSP head and our mass language modeling head. Now, we just want to focus for on the NSP head for now. And as well, we don't need to fine tune or train our models with both of these heads, we can actually do it one by one. We could use it mass language modeling only or we could use NSP only. But the full approach to pre-training BERT is using both. So if we have a look inside our NSP head, we'll find that we have a feed forward neural network and that will output two different values. Now, these two values, are our is not the next sequence there and our is the next sequence which is there okay so value zero is the next sentence value one is not the next sentence now we have the final outputs from our final encoder in BERT at the bottom here and we don't actually use all of these activations. We only use the CLS token activation, which is over at the left here. So this here is our CLS token. Okay. And when I say this is our CLS token, I mean more that this is not our CLS token. The CLS token is down here. So we input the CLS token and this output is the subsequent output after being processed by 12 or so encoders within BERT itself. So this is the output representation of that CLS token. 
Now, the activations from that get fed into our feed forward ne neural network. And the dimensionality that we have here is 768 for that single token. This is in the BERT base model, by the way. And that gets translated into our dimensionality here, which is just the two outputs. So that's essentially how NSP works. Uh, once we once we have our two outputs here, we just take the argmax of both of those. So we, we take both over here and we just take an argmax function of that. And that will output us either zero or one, where zero is the is next class and one is the not next class. And that's how NSP works. So let's dive into the code and see how all of this works in Python. Okay, so we're gonna be using Hugging Faces Transformers and PyTorch. So we'll import both of those. And from Transformers, we just need the BERT tokenizer class and the BERT for next sentence prediction class. And Bert, next sentence prediction. Then we also want to import torch. And we're going to use two sentences here. So both of these are from the Wikipedia page on the American Civil War. And these are both consecutive sentences. So going back to what we looked at before, we would be hoping that Bert would output a zero label for both of these because they are because sentence b is the next sentence after sentence a this one being sentence b this one being sentence a so execute that and we now have three different steps that we need to take and that is tokenization create a classification label so the zero or the one so that we can train the model and then from that, we calculate the loss. So the first step there is tokenization. So we tokenize, it's pretty easy. All we do is inputs, tokenizer, and then we pass text and text two. And we are using PyTorch here. So I want to return a PyTorch tensor. Make sure that's PT. Now we need to also initialize those. So tokenizer equals BERT tokenizer from pre-trained. And we'll just use BERT base in case for now. Obviously you can use another BERT model if you if you want. And I'm just gonna copy that and initialize our model as well. Okay, now rerun that. And we'll get this warning, that's because we're using these models that are used for training or for fine tuning. So it's just telling us that we shouldn't really use this for inference. You need to train it first. And that's fine because that's our intention. Now, from these inputs, we'll get a few different tensors. So we have input IDs, token type IDs, and attention mask. Now for next sentence prediction, we do need all of these. So this is a little bit different to mass language modeling. With mass language modeling, we don't actually need token type IDs, but for next sentence prediction, we do. So let's have a look at what we have inside these. So input IDs, it's just our tokenized text. And you see that we pass these two sentences here and they're actually both within the same sentence or the same tensor here, input IDs. And they're separated by this 102 in the middle, which is a separator token. So before that, all these tokens, that is our text variable or sentence A. And then afterwards we have our text two variable, which is sentence B. 
And we can see this mirrored in the token type IDs tensor as well. So all the way along here, up to here, that's our sentence A. So we have zeros for sentence A. And then following that, we have ones representing sentence B. And then we have our tension mask, which is just ones because the tension mask is a one where it's a real token and a zero where we have padding tokens. So I don't need to really worry about that tensor at all. Now, the next step here is that we need to create a labels tensor. So to do that, we just write labels and we just need to make sure that when we do this, we use a long tensor, okay? So we use a long tensor and in here, we need to pass a list containing a single value, which is either our zero for is the next sentence or one for is not the next sentence. In our case, our two sentences are supposed to be together. So we would pass a zero in here and run that. And if we just have a look at what we get from there, we see that we get this integer tensor. So now we're ready to calculate our loss, which is really easy. So we have our model up here, which we have already initialized. So we just take that and all we do is pass our inputs from here into our model is keyword arguments. So that's what these two symbols are for. And then we also pass labels to the labels parameter. Okay. And that will output a couple of tenses for us. So we can execute that and let's have a look at what we have. So you see that we get these two tenses. We have the logits and we also have the loss tensor. So let's have a look at the logits and we should be able to recognize this from earlier on where we saw those two nodes and we had the two values, one for oh, the index zero for is next and the index one for is not next. So let's have a look. And you see here that we get both of those. So this is our activation for is the next sentence. This is our activation for is not the next sentence. And if we were to take the argmax of those, outputs logits, we get zero, which means it is the next sentence. Okay, and we also have the loss and this loss tensor, that will only be output if we pass our labels here. Otherwise we just get a logits tensor. So when we're training, obviously we need labels so that we can calculate the loss. And if we just have a look at that, we see it's just a, a loss value, which is very small because the model is predicting a zero and the label that we've provided is also a, a zero. So the loss is, is pretty good there. So that is how NSP works. Obviously it's slightly different if you're actually training your model and I am going to cover that in the next video. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. But for now, that's it for this. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.